What's going on, fam? We up in that. This is a, this is that boy right there. This is a uh, one of King Creed's sons. This is my boy Domino. The Domino effect. He got pups on the way. Just about a week from now, he's got pups on the way. The female behind him, he's got pups with her. So these are going to be a real good, really good little pups. I'm very excited about it. As you can see, he is an awesome bully. Uh, he's a pocket bully. Today I want to talk about, are all pocket bullies exotic? And I got a, got me a, a yard stick here, so we're gonna do some measurements too. And we're gonna see where he's at. Now, pocket bully should be 14 to 17 inches as a male. 13 to 16 inches as a female. You see his mom, that's Domino's mom there. She's 13 inches. Now, his dad is King Cree, so a couple of his brothers are a little bit bigger, but he is at this size. His, his brother Dolomite is a really impressive looking bully. He's a little bit taller than Domino is. Uh, Domino was the right size for my program. This is what I wanted for my program. That's what I was trying to trying to create. So I want to get some measurements on him, let you check him out. But the, but the question is, is, is all exotic are all pocket bullies exotic? And it's absolutely, the answer is no. Uh, the two main types of bullies, uh, terrier type and, and um, bulldog type is what I would say. Uh, even though bulldog, French bulldog, all those are in the same category of uh, the massive parts of the bulldog, of the bully are in the same part with the terrier. Uh, but all of my bullies, I breed them to have a long muzzle like that, a terrier-sized muzzle. I think that is how we make the bully healthy. And I'm proof of that because my bullies run around here every day. And y'all see the videos of my bullies running. You see them outside in outside kennels. They're not living in the house on the couch. So the difference between my bullies and a lot of bullies that you see is that they'll have... The, those other bullies will have an underbite where the bottom jaw is longer than the top jaw and the top of the muzzle is shorter than the dogs that I have. They have a shorter muzzle. Those dogs have, a, have trouble breathing and that's where the American bully gets a bunch of uh, its unhealthy, you know, unhealthy traits and unhealthy... Um, uh, uh, genes, a lot of that comes from the muzzle being too short. And we bred the French Bulldogs and, 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 bull, and, and English Bulldogs and stuff like in there with that type of a muzzle because we was trying to make the dog shorter. And that's how it got to be pocket bully. So that's why most of the time when you see a pocket bully, it'll have an underbite and it'll be less healthy than this one. What my program is doing is making pocket bullies that don't have an underbite. That's the difference between my program and theirs. My program, we're more healthy because we got better breathing. We got more oxygen to the body, period, and it makes a better health of a dog. We already had muscle, muscle and everything on there. We're very strict on structure. Everything I have is good structure. You can go through any dog on my yard. We got good structure. We got no train wrecks around here. But sometimes it's overlooked that my dogs are totally uh, a, a little bit different than the rest of the bullies. And the main thing is the muzzle. Why is that? What, what does that have to do with being exotic? I was going to get him out of it. Let me go ahead and tell you this. What, if you're not a member of the family, man, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you listen this long, I really would appreciate it. It really would help me out. You go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you're not a member of the family, go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to keep you updated on everything that we do. 
Okay, so what does the muzzle have to do with is it is it pocket bully exotic? Since they was trying to make them shorter, which makes it pocket, they used bulldogs and French bulldogs and things of that nature, and that's how you got the the under the underbite and the short muzzle. Uh, so nine times out of ten, when you see a pocket bully, if somebody's bragging about a pocket bully or even uh, advertising a pocket bully, it's going to be exotic because that's what they're proud of. But at hard cut, I'm proud of making this a pocket bully that don't have an underbite. Go find me some more of them and, I, and, and we'll have some. But if you see his mother, Black Widow, she also uh, has a good muzzle and no underbite. Black Widow comes from Gaudilon Dax, who's one of the most famous exotics. Very famous pocket. And she is great granddaughter, like three lines of separate them in the pedigree. I don't know if that's great great granddaughter or granddaughter. But she comes from Dax. And he has an underbite. And mine don't. Because we bred to certain genes in that dog. And we doubled up on certain genes that would get me a shorter dog with better health. That's the difference between hard cut bully kennels and the other kennels. That's why I call it hard cut bully kennels. Because it's hard cut. It's the top. It's, it's, it's the most healthy. I want you to be able to recognize a hard cut bully when you see it. And the first way that you're going to recognize ours is if you see a pocket bully that has the hard cut bully name on it, it does not have an underbite. And that's why it does not look exotic. Everybody that sees the, the, the classic exotic bully look, the classic exotic bully look is an underbite, short, probably a kink tail or a half a tail. That is the normal exotic bully um, look. And I want mine to be recognizable. And what makes mine so recognizable is my pocket bullies don't have an underbite now. We are more healthy. My pocket bullies have more structure. She's got some pups coming here in two weeks, though. She's going to have another good little pups. That's black... Uh, that's Domino's mom there. This girl Pearl here, she's a nice sized bully. She's not any taller than Domino. They're about the same height. But because she's a female, she's crept into the standard class even at the same height. Because she's an inch, the, the, the criteria is an inch different. So as a female, I would classify her, classify her as a standard and not as a pocket. We're going to let Domino out of here. Let him run for a minute and then we'll get a we'll get a good good read. That's my boy there. Now there's two pocket bullets that ain't exotic. Two pocket bullets that do not have an underbite. Click that like button for me, fam. It sure will help me out. I want to get you a good shot of the height on them. I mean, the, the difference in height is not much at all, and she is very short. Let me put this down, we'll get a little bit of a reading. Oh. Sound like an old man, didn't it? Let me turn this around this way. Come right under 14 inches is what she was. Come on, boy. Put down my
right at 16 inches. Now what I measured to was his withers, that's the top of the shoulder, which was called a withers. So, he's still a pocket bully. He was getting close, so I kind of thought he had crept into that standard bully class, but no. He's still a pocket bully by another end. I saw a video say, does the size matter? It definitely matters on the price. Because they're charging you an enormous amount for a pocket bully that can't breathe. Because of what goes into making that pocket bully, all the things that goes into it and how... Uh, you know, how difficult it is to breed, nurse, and how many puppies that you even get from the litter. Makes it an expensive dog. But they, 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 they're selling you one that don't have good health. Mine do. Look at he done found him a bag of, a box of green beans. We do a lot of uh, raw food. Mostly try to do an all raw diet here. We do have some uh, dog food now. I go back and forth with kibble and uh, and dog and um, and raw diet. Just because it's still an experimental stage for us, and we're still kind of halfway transitioning, and I want to make sure that I'm monitoring the weight and everything uh, to make sure that it's going good. And for a while, let me show you the pups. The pups were a little bit skinnier than I wanted them to be. That's his sister. And she looks like she was going to be a standard, but she's not that tall. So I think we, we, we pulling it off, man. We have men, we have taken, we have taken a, 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 a standard bully and shrunk it. And these pups are seven months old. This boy here is, is, uh, available right now. I had some calls for him this morning. People looking at him, trying to get some more pictures and everything. It's better for me just do a video, man. So check out this video, see him. He, this boy here is ready, ready to go still. Now he looks as long like he's gonna be a standard. Creed looked like that, but Creed looked like that at about twelve weeks, not at seven months. At Creed at seven, at, at seven months, King Creed looked like a monster. So these boys are not going to be standards and they have no underbite. That's the difference between, that's the difference. That's what we're doing with my program. Like getting her to clean her pen up. She comes from Black Widow. That's Black Widow's uh, daughter. Amazing little pup. She's going to be nice. Blue Fawn. That's that boy King Creed right there. I don't know if I can get this right on the deal. You can kind of see. Get back. You can kind of see he was about 21 inches, man. Look at that. That's that 21 right there. You can see he's right there about 20, 21 inches. Over 21 is an XL. So size does matter because it matters on the class. It matters on the height. I mean, on the height, but on the uh, price of the pup, it matters on uh, the breeding, who you breed to, to, to who, um, and it matters for your lifestyle of what type of dog you're trying to get. Uh, Creed is an awesome dog, man. I'm telling you, he's a great dog, best family pet that you could have. But if you got the same dog with his size or Domino, and you want a house dog you probably would take Domino. And if you want a dog to run around in the car with and all that, you would take Domino. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. And I'm doing what I'm doing to, to make the health of the bully better overall. And I think we've done that, man. My dogs have an outdoor, indoor kennel. They got an indoor space there that's about five to six foot, five by five. And they got this outdoor kennel. So we changed the way bullies are even housed. And they have survived a whole summer. You guys have seen it on the internet. They survived summers and winters because they're more healthy.
And I can't put it into words every time. You know, if you send me an email, it's hard for me to put into words what we offer and what, what's the difference. I can't really put it into words. You got to see it. And I'm hoping that by seeing it, you'll, you'll understand. Yeah, here's is different. If you have a bully, you understand that's different. And that underbite does make, make a difference. Yeah, boy. Oh. Come here. <laughs> Come here. I like that, man. Nice wide chest, big head. Anyway, that's what we producing out here, right? Man, real bullies, man. If you need to hit that like button, hit that follow button. Come on out the bench for the big win, man. I'll get you some hard cut. It's on.